So many testimonies all over here tonight. The Lord's faithfulness and the Lord's goodness. A preacher tonight is really a testimony of God's faithfulness. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, 25, As cold waters are to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. This man is actually from the complete opposite side of the world. But God is working there. It's really a miracle how things worked out. I'm excited that y'all get to meet him and uh, just hear what the Lord will speak to him, uh, to us through him tonight. Would you give Pastor Lakendra a warm welcome? Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. What a great blessings for me to be here uh, in the midst of born again, sanctified, redeemed, people of God Amen. to give glory and honor to the mighty God. It's been great blessings and privilege for me to be here. Thank you so much for having me once again, Pastor Luke and all the families. Thank you so much. Uh, because of the limitation of the language I may not be able to express the all thing that I wanted to share, but please uh, bear with me for uh, at least 30 minutes uh, as I open from the Bible to see and what the Lord is telling us tonight. From the living word from the Bible. It's been only six weeks here in America and observing different things here in this great land. And now I can say the White House is not the center of America, or the World Trade Center. Is not the center of this land. The center of this nation should be where the presence of God is. And I feel that this is the presence of the Lord that we are enjoying and giving true glory to our Father. Because we are built upon the solid rock. And Jesus Christ to give glory and honor to the true and living God. Amen. 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 So today I would like to speak from the book of Psalm 126. This morning, Pastor Luke read from this passage, and I didn't share with him that I'm going to speak from this passage. Wow. But I praise God that the alignment in his spirit, that the Holy Spirit uh, put us together. So praise the Lord. For His Spirit is moving in our midst tonight. And uh, I, uh, this book of Psalm is my favorite book. And I'm always trying to tease the gospel of Jesus Christ from the book of Psalm. Amen. And today we're going to read from the book of Psalm 126. Only six, six verses are there. And allow me to read for all of us. 
When the Lord restored the fortune of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with the laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said, Among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like extreme in the Negev. Who, those who saw in tears shall grieve with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shout of joy, bringing his saves with him. Amen and amen. Father God, thank you for this wonderful privilege, O oh Lord. Thank you for your presence and the anointing of oh Father God. I'm here standing to declare the word of truth of Father God, not my own words, O Lord. I pray, Father God, your spirit, O Father, touch our heart, O Lord, so that we would be able to listen the voice of the Lord tonight through this reading of this scripture, preaching of the scriptures of Father God, so that we would be able to understand your heart in our life, for our family, for our church, for our nation, O Father God. Thank you so much, O Lord, for this word. Father God, I submit myself unto you, Lord, the Holy Spirit, greatest teacher of our life, Lord. Teach us, O Father. Guide us, O Lord. Give us clarity, O Father God, and the anointing from the Word. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen Amen. and amen. Tonight, I'm going to share on the topic of the rejoice, cry, and then go to sow the seed. Of the king. The book of Psalm is not the book of prayers and praises only. It contains the whole history of the Israels and the history of the works of the redemption that the Almighty God has done in the life of Israels. So, as we are going to see from this Psalm, this portion of the scriptures tonight, we, we need to understand. How God worked in the history, in the life of Israel. And these Psalms open in this way. When the Lord restored the fortune of Zion. And it is telling something about the people of Zion. When we say that Zion, this is the particular place in the, in, in the, in the Jerusalem. The name of mountain. But also, this Zion is used in the Bible to represent Israel, to represent the Jerusalem, and also to represent the people of Jerusalem. And here is the psalmist is saying that when the Lord restored the person of the people of Jerusalem. So, so in order to understand this clearly, we need to understand from from, from what God is, God is restoring the life of these people, or from what, uh, what, what kinds of uh, the problems God is restoring them. So we need to understand the history behind this in order to understand what Sam is, is trying to convey tonight through this scripture. And in order to be more clear about these things, I would like you to open with me the book of 2 Chronicle, chapter 36. The book of 2 Chronicle, chapter 36. I'm going to read some verses from verse 17. 2 Chronicles, chapter 36. Therefore, he brought up against them the king of Chaldeans, who killed their young man with a sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or ace. He gave them all into his hands. 
verse 18. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasure of the house of the Lord, and the treasure and the treasure of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they, they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and burned all his palace with pyre and destroyed all its precious vessel. He took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword. They had become servants to him and to his son until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia. Here in this chapter, there's a describing the distractions that Israel had to face because of their disobedience. The prophet Jeremiah had been prophesizing this, that disobedience of Israel will lead them into the distractions. Particularly, the, as this scripture is describing, they're, they're, they, will, they will be in the exile, under the power of, of the king Nebuchadnezzar, in the kingdom of Babylon. So here, when, time, when, the, when the time has come, as the prophet Jeremiah has prophesied, the Jerusalem had been captured by the power of the Babylonian king here. And we can see the destruction of the Jerusalem here. The king of the Babylonians and the soldier of that kingdom had captured the kingdom of God or kingdom of Jerusalem. The people of God is now mourning. Now they're in tears because everything has broken. Everything has broke down here. They broke down the temples and the walls of Jerusalem and they even killed all the young men and the virgins and all people. Many people were killed there and those who escaped from the sower, they were taken to the kingdom of Babylon under the slave of the Babylonian kingdom. Yeah. And it was the distractions that brought by themselves because of their disobedience, they're going away from God. They're worshipping Baal. And they're worshipping other idols. And they're neglecting the true word of God. Yeah. They're neglecting to come in the sanctuary of the Jehovah God. To worship in spirit and truth. And as a result of that disobedience, now they're facing this destruction and they're going away from their own land and they're going under the slave of the king, our kingdom Babylonian here. And how, how serious was it? If we see the book of Lamentation chapter 1, we can see that how serious was it? How, how this, this, the, the pain, the destructions brought to all the Israelites. So in the book of Lamentations, the prophet is, is singing, the, singing this song of mourning. And he's saying, how lonely sits the city. Now the city of Jerusalem becomes lonely. Because it is quiet. There is no one to make sound. There is no one to praise God in the temple of God in the Jerusalem. Because they were taken into the exile. And now they are slave of the ungodly king. So Lamentation chapter 1 says, How lonely sits the city that was full of people. There used to be full of people in this city, but now it's lonely. How like a widow has she become. See, who was great among the nation. The Jerusalem used to be the great, great land, great place among the nation, among other kingdoms. But today, this city has become lonely. There, is no, there are no people here. See, what, see, who was princess among the provinces has become a slave. The Jerusalem was the princess. I mean, the, the, the prophet here describing that the city was the beautiful city. Among other nations, among other wicked kingdoms surrounded. But now... This city, 
The princess among the provinces has become a slave of the Babylonian. And now here the prophet is crying out for his people. In the verse 2, she weeps bitterly in the night with tears and heart seeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. There's no one to comfort the city of Jerusalem. It has been quiet city, lonely city, forsaken city, because the people of this city has been gone into that exile, that captivities, and that slave. And all her friends have dealt traitorously with her. They have become her enemies. And they feel this, this, this pain in their heart. And the prophet of God is describing how painful it is to be slave of ungodly king and the kingdom. They had, they had no sanctuary over there in the Babylon. There was no, no sanctuary, no altar there to bring offerings and the praises to their God, Jehovah. So they were mourning in the slaves for 70 years. Maybe some of the old people died in that land of slave, slavery. And maybe some, some newborn, new generations who were born in the land of Babylon, they had no clue they had no they had no clue what how, how this jerusalem is all about so they were all mourning because of these distractions that they had brought by themselves because of the obedience but thank god our god always hears the cries of his people he is the jehovah rohi the true shepherd who hears the voice of his sheep and always answers by the powerful words, powerful deeds. And here the Israelites were lonely, crying for the redemption, crying for to be, crying for to be free from this slavery. But it was long periods of time. For the 70 years, they were away from the temple of Jerusalem. And their temple were broken. Their walls were broken and they were part away from their promised land. And they were crying with the pain in their hearts and mourning for the sin. But God could not hold it long. He made a way for the redemption of his people to make them free. And if we see the book of Ezra chapter 1, we can see what Lord has done for them. Hallelujah. God Almighty. Praise the Lord. The book of Ezra chapter 1. In the first year of Cyrus. King of Persia. The, 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 that the word of the Lord. By the mouth of Jeremiah. Might be fulfilled. The Lord is tired. The, the, the Lord is tired of the spirit of Cyrus. Who was the ungodly. Who was actually. Uh, uh, um. Who was not from the Jew. I mean. He, he was not from the Jerusalem. But this king of Persia. Is making the proclamation. Announcement. For all the people of Judah. So that they can go back to the land of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Thus says the Cyrus king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven has given me all the kingdom of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Hallelujah. God has moved the heart of King Cyrus here. And he's making this declaration that the Lord has commanded me to rebuild the house of God in the land of Jerusalem in Judah. So I'm proclaiming, I'm making this proclamation. Now all the people of Judah who are alive, you go back to your land. Hallelujah. And this is the Wonderful deeds of the Lord among the peoples. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when this, when this news heard by the, by, I mean, by people of Jerusalem, the, by the people of Zion, they could not understand. 
We are, we are, we are, we are, we are dreaming, or is it real? They couldn't comprehend the works of the Lord because they have already lost the hope that they would able to go back to their land. But God is doing real work here. Hallelujah. He He's doing wonderful works here. And when they understand the Lord is, is restoring their persons back, it means the Lord is redeeming them from the exile to be free to go to the land of Israel so that they, they would be able to build the temple of Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, to bring worship back in the Jerusalem, in the Jerusalem, in the land of Judah. Hallelujah. And when they understood that this is real work of the Lord, and they were really, they were really unhappy. They were really, you know, they were really praising God. And they said, then, then our mouth was filled with a the laughter. They realized this is not dream. This is the real work the Lord is doing in our life. And then the, 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 they were, their mouth was filled with the laughter. They're praising God with the joy and their tongue with sounds of joy. And they're singing for the nations by saying, Lord has done great things among the nations. Hallelujah. And that the Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. So here, if we see verse 1, 2, and 3, we can see that the Israelites were rejoicing in the redemption that Lord has brought for them. That Lord has Freed from them, from the slavery. Hallelujah. From the captivity. Now they're free. They can go back to the temple of God. And bring worship back. And worship their almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about the, the history of America. But if I see the history of Nepal... Nepali people would uh, uh, say that uh, Nepal is the one of the oldest nation in the South Asia. We never been in, in a slavery. We never been a colonized colonizations. Even we, we we never been in the colonization of the Great Britain. So people of Nepal, they think they feel proud. That we never been in any slavery. They think that they're free. But if we see their life, their life is bound by the idols. They're the slaves of idols. Because of the idol worship, now their life have been exiled under that idol worship. And every day, People of Nepal are going deeper and deeper under this slavery. Yeah. When, 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 when God saved my life from the dangerous place, from, this, from the war, in that civil war, I cannot explain how happy I was at that time. And even now, I'm so glad that my God saved me from the slavery of idol worship, from the slave of death, from the slave of these transgressions, and from the slave of power of sin and death. I'm free because the blood of Jesus Christ has purchased me back. He has restored my persons back. Because of the act of the cross. Hallelujah. My people are trying to earn salvation. By the sacrifices of animals. But it is not possible. But Christ has already done that great sacrifice on that cross. On the cross to purchase my life. To make me free from the slavery of sin and death. Hallelujah. So I cannot explain this joy. I cannot explain in the words that how happy I am. I'm going back to my home. He has restored my fortune back. I'm now back to my original place. Hallelujah. In the promised land. Hallelujah. 
I believe Paul has this deep understanding about the joy of the Lord. When I see this book of Philippians, Philippians 4.4, he's writing to the people, he's writing to the free people from the jail, from the prison, rejoice in the Lord. Again I say rejoice in the Lord. I don't know how many of you know that the people in prison are normally, they don't sing and dance there. They mourn. That's right. They're full of, full of fear, sadness. I have, I have seen people in prison. We had been doing ministry in prison, preaching the gospel. Everyone are very sad, gloomy. And they have lost the hope. That's the people who lives in the prison. But Paul here is saying that rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. He was bound by the chain and put in prison. But he knew that even though I'm bound by the chain of this world. I'm here in the four walls but I'm free from sin and death because of Jesus Christ. Paul knew these things. So Paul is saying that rejoice in the Lord because you are redeemed. You are free. You are forgiven. You are accepted. You are in the house of the Lord. And your persons are restored back. Hallelujah. And because of that joy that Paul had, Paul could able to do his ministry until his last breath. Today, I have been visiting many churches. Devil has stolen the joy of the Lord from the church. We, we serve the living God. We do not serve the dead God like a Hindu and Buddhist who. We serve the risen Christ, the living God, the creator of heavens and earth. So there should be the joy of the Lord in this earth to serve this mighty God. Hallelujah. We cannot serve God with gloomy face, with a sadness morning. Let's get it back. The joy of the Lord, the strength of our life. So that we might give true worship to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are depressed. You cannot praise your God. Let's remember what he has done in our life. We may never have been in the exiles like the people of Judah. People of Zion. But we, 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 we had been living under the slavery of sin and death. The depression, addictions and the problems of the world. But the blood of Jesus has made us free from that slavery. So that today we are free and we are, we are now slave of righteousness. To give glory to our God. Hallelujah. And this joy, this gladness in our hearts. Will make us more strong to finish our race, to fight this good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, devil wants us to be defeated. But God has brought us in the, in the place of victory. We are now in the winning side. By the precious blood of the cross, He has been relocated us. We were born in Adam. We were born in sin. We were born in the slavery. And the ways of that sin was death. But now by the blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. Our sins have been washed away. And we are called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the joy of the Lord should be in our heart. So that we would be able to give true glory to our Father God. Amen. Many Christians have lost the joy of the salvation. And today from the story of the people of Judah, I'm reminding the power of the Holy Spirit is reminding tonight here. Let's rejoice in our salvation. Let's rejoice in our salvation. Because this salvation is not on the basis of human efforts. This salvation is not earned by the religious work, not by earned by by the by observing observing the law, the works of the law, but by the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
That's why have that joy in your heart. And nothing can defeat our life. We will walk in the victory on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when I, uh, let me read this uh, verse, verse 4 here. Restore our fortune, O Lord, like extreme in the Negev. Here we see disconnections in, in the writings uh, uh, with this uh, the, the, the verse 1. If you see in the verse 1, it says, The Lord has restored the fortunes. But in verse 4, the psalmist writing, Lord, you restore our fortunes. Here's, uh, in, the, in the verse 1, we see that Lord has done great things. Lord made them free. From the slavery. But in verse 4. It is, it's not the, it is not the song of joy. It is not song of the victory. But the psalmist is. Making supplications to God. Lord God have mercy on us. And restore our fortune back. I think possibly. This prayer. Should be for the restoration. Of the social uh, social life in the Jerusalem and also to rebuild the temple and also rebuild the wall. And most importantly, I believe this is the prayers for those who are still in the exile. We remember that the work of the redemption from the exiles had been done in the several uh, uh, different times under the leadership of the uh, different servants of the Lord. And I believe that these people who are now free and back to Jerusalem, uh, they're praying, they're praying to God for, the, for, the, for their dear one who are still in the land of slavery, in the land of captivity, still were in the Babylon's. There were two reasons they were still in the, in, the, in the land of slavery. Some were already starting liking the land of Babylon. The Babylon was prosperous. Bible tells us the wicked prosperous. But it will not last. Maybe some, of, some, some people from Jerusalem or Israel, they may like the Babylon when it stay, they stay for 70 years long period of time. But these people, those who are already back to Jerusalem, they're praying to God, Lord, bring them back. They're still there, oh Father God. And I want them back to this land. Lord, you give us, the, restore us, restore that our fortune by bringing these people back. And I, I, I believe this is the prayers for their loved one who are still in the bondage, who are still in the slavery. And here from this verse, I would like to encourage all of you to be reminded to pray for the lost. We rejoice in the salvations. This is our foundation because we believe the work of the justification is complete. By the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it is for all people. For all the world. But it's a lot of people. Are in the exile. Of the sin and death. So as we rejoice in our salvation. As we rejoice in the presence of God. And as we give thanks to our Lord. For the works of the redemption. We should not forget to pray for our people. So here we can learn the principle that as we, as we rejoice in the salvation, we also need to learn to cry for those who are not in the salvation. Hallelujah. Because God hears our prayers. He always hears our prayers. If I give one example from my life, I told you that my mother and my father, they were separated for I mean, still now, my mother left us and married other guy. And my father raised me and my sister. For many, many years, for decades, we didn't see our mom. I had been praying for my mom. Because my, I, I told you my father received the Lord when I was baptizing. I mean, in the day of my baptism. 
But my, my, my mother was far away from our home, family. We're disconnected. But again, I had been praying for my mom. And this prayer has been really taking long time. I had to pray for 18 years. But the last two months back, the Lord has done great things in my life. She confessed her sin and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord, as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot explain what I'm feeling right now. 18 years I have been crying for my mom. He hears your prayers. He gives souls back to the kingdom. I praise God. Now we have started one church in, the, in her house now. Preaching the gospel in that mountain. Bringing other families. Martin Luther says, If one man cannot live without breathing, how one Christian can think to live without praying? Without praying, we cannot live, my dear brothers and sisters. Right. And here today, I'm not saying to pray, to fulfill our needs. I'm here, to, I'm here saying that let's pray for the lost. Pray for those who are not in the salvation. Yeah. Let's pray. Someday God will move their heart and bring back to the promised land in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And I praise God for my mom's life. Mom's souls. She is free. And she is saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. I'm again saying. The joy is the foundation. But from that joy. We need other things to do here in this world. We need to learn to cry also. Yes. The shortest verse in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 11, 35, Jesus wept. Why? Why Jesus wept? Because Lazarus was in the tomb. But why Jesus wept there? He knew this. After some hours, I'm going to raise this man from this tomb. If Jesus knew that, why he's weeping here? It took me many years to understand the heart of Father. Why Jesus wept? If he knows everything, he knew that see this man, the Lazarus, will be coming out, uh, coming out from that tomb after some hours. But yet he wept there. I believe it is not because of Lazarus' death. Because Lazarus will be coming out from the, from the tomb. I believe that he wept because people are lost. Yeah. Their death in the spirit. Yeah. And the dying in the spirit is dangerous thing. They will be dangerous, in dangers of the hell pyre for the eternity. Yeah. Right. For eternal damnations. For eternal hell. And Jesus wept for the people. Who are, die, who are dying in their spirit. He cried for that people. For those people. And I'm saying here tonight. If we have true joy of the Lord. Let's cry for the people. Let's cry for the land. Let's cry for the community of here. Ipura, so that God will hear our prayers. And send more souls here in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer has that power. If we remember the book of Acts chapter 16. When Paul and Silas were put in prison. They were praising in the midst of night. They were praying there. They were praying to God and giving thanks to the Lord. Do you know what happened as a result of their prayer and praises? God brought salvations in the prison. Prisoner were free. And even prisoner bowed down and accept Lord Jesus Christ. And his whole household was saved and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So dear brothers and sisters, let's cry for those who are not in the salvation. And God will hear our prayers and answer us with the precious souls. That's why we have reward. 
crying for the loss. Hallelujah. Let's not cry for ourselves. This is a very simple thing. The first part I'm, I'm saying the rejoice. This is individual. Let's rejoice for our salvation. But let's cry for others. But we are doing differently. We're crying for ourselves. We're crying. We're living in distress life. We're living in depression. Let's look back. The works of the Lord. What he has done on the cross. Let's get back that joy of the Lord. For our foundation. And let's cry for those who are not in the salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I would like to make it start. And I would like to read verse 5 and 6. Those who sow in, the, in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. As I explained from the book of Acts 16, if you read, they were crying, they were praying in the midst of night, but they reap the harvest of souls after their prayers and praises. My dear brothers and sisters, we're not crying. We're not only crying for the people, those who are lost. We should take the seed of the gospel the seed of the masses of the salvations to sow in the land, in their heart, so that we'll, we'll, we'll reap with the joy, the praises, and the victory. I don't know uh, how to describe the words, works of the ministry in the land of Nepal, but we are surrounded by by the opposition. We are surrounded by the persecutors. Persecutors are among us. Our society is rejecting Christianity. In this week that I am rejoicing my salvation here with you. In the presence of the Lord. But back home, the, social, the community and the government is trying to remove our never church, the church where my friend is pastoring there. The thing that the, the thing that this church is not good things. Destroying the idol worship. They say they're uh, we are destroying their culture and the belief. In fact, yes, they're right. We want to destroy. We want to destroy what they are doing over there. We want to destroy the power of darkness over there. We want to destroy the works of idol worship there. Because we want to establish the kingdom of God in the land of Nepal. And that's what we are doing there. But they're so harsh. They're becoming harsh. And they're, they're, really, they're really after the churches and Christian mission work today. But the praise the Lord for his promises in the words. He's saying those who are sowing with tears. They will reap the joy and the victory. Hallelujah. With this understanding. With this hope of glory. We are preaching the gospel. Sowing this seed in the hearts of Nepali. Every day. Every day. And every month we are reaching 4,500 people throughout the nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are 18, 80, 81,000 villages in Nepal. And we estimate there are about, there are churches in about 12 to 15,000 villages. But it's still 65,000 villages are empty. And that's the, that's the field for us that God has given. So I'm training the farmers there. To carry this seed and take into these villages to sow the seed of salvation. Yeah, yeah. Even though it, is, it, there, it requires tears, pains, persecutions. But we're doing it because we know the Lord will bring the harvest yeah, because of right. these tears. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why dear brothers and sisters, we're not only rejoicing in the Lord. We're not rejoicing only in the salvation. Not only we're not only rejoicing in our salvation. We're also crying for those who are not in the salvation. Amen. We're not only crying in the four walls of the church. We're going out and declaring the true word of God among them. And God is bringing more souls. God is bringing more harvest of the souls 
throughout the nations. And I praise God for this wonderful work. Hallelujah. And we are, we are observing here that how Israelites were reacted when Lord has done great things in their life. And we, we can see that three things here. They were rejoicing, they were praying, and they were doing some labor, some hard work. And there is three principles for the true blood bought church of Jesus Christ. If we understand the works of the redemption, if we understand that we are brought from that slavery of sin and death, we need to have this joy in the Lord, the joy in the salvation, and also heart to cry for those who are not in the salvation. And not only crying, let's go out and preach the gospel. That's what Jesus said, go out. Go to all the nations and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Mark 16, go and heal the sick and preach the gospel. That's why we are doing this. Yeah. Houston Taylor says, the Great Commission is not an absence to be considered, but it is a command to be obeyed. Yeah. If we truly believe the Lord has done great things in our life, Let's go and tell others. Let's go and tell others. And declare the masses of hope and the salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, at last I would like to remind once again. The joy in salvation. Cry for those who are not in the salvation. And let's go and declare the masses of salvation. And this is the character of the true blood blood church of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Praise Praise God. God. I want to ask you to please stand with me tonight and